Hi YouTube, I sculpted a really cool grotesque little monster and I'm going to show you how I made it step by step. Um, I started in a completely different way this time. This is a whole load of um, bits and bobs that I've removed from a load of Lego. Um, this is actually not Lego, it's like um, mega blocks and sort of the junk that I take out when I collect Lego. This is a good tip for any of you model makers out there. Um, if you can find any little odd bits and bobs like this that can be useful, you can use them in your model making. And quite often, like if you go into a charity shop or something, you'll find a load of old plastic junk toys. You can just take bits off them. So in this particular one, I'm just going to take these long sort of claw-like sections, just because I think I can use these as a base for our little weird creature. So I just started by wiring six of these claw-like sections together, just with some aluminium wire. This will give us a really good framework for the little creature. I then added some milliput to strengthen the kind of form and to start making more interesting shape in the middle. If you haven't used milliput before, it's a two-part putty and you mix the two parts together and it sets rock hard in about four hours. They now sponsor me, so if you haven't tried them, make sure you go out and try some. It's brilliant stuff. I then rolled a whole load of little balls, different sizes slightly, but some of these are going to be used for texture on the skin of the creature, and some of them will be shaped into teeth. So at the moment, these are all still soft milliput. You can see that I ended up leaving quite a few of them just as balls like this. Like I say, this will be used on a skin texture. The rest I've shaped into teeth. So I've made long pointed teeth this time. And uh, I think this should give a nice kind of horrific appearance. It's really a good idea to make all your teeth separately. Let them harden in the milliput. Because then you can just make some gums or something. And you can just push the teeth straight into the soft gums. I then scrunched some aluminium foil around the wire just to give me this kind of neck appearance. Um, this is quite solid even at this stage and then you can just build up the milliput over the top of it like this. So this is how it turned out with a layer of milliput. Um, it's quite a thin layer, it only needs to be like a millimetre or a couple of millimetres thick. And you can see here I've put it on a little wooden base as well to give it extra support. While that thin layer of milliput was still soft on the neck and the body, I just pressed a whole load of little balls into it. That gives it this really nice kind of skin texture effect. I've also propped it up while it's all still soft because the weight of the head was kind of bending it forward. Whereas by propping it like this at an angle, it just means that the neck will set at this nice kind of uh, position. Right, I quite often use papier-mâché for this kind of thing as well. So I just use bits of torn up kitchen paper with kind of rough edges and I just use some super PVA glue, which is the stuff you use for kind of um, flooring. I'll show you a big tub of it later so you can see. Um, but you can see here I've just done like a lot of kind of thin shredded um, bits as well and bits that I've actually kind of peeled off of a tub like this kind of um, big flap at the back here. So every time you get any kind of bits of dry glue on edges of um, tubs, just peel it off. It can be really useful for these kind of effects. You just stick them on and it's pretty strong stuff, this PVA glue. Um, remember, it's got to be super PVA, not just normal PVA, um, because when it dries, it is, it's like sort of rubbery. It's quite cool. So you can see I've just built up a whole load of um, kind of weird sort of entrail-y type looking bits at the bottom and I'm going to add to that as well in a minute. It's worth noting that the whole creature is stuck to the base much more firmly now with layers of this kitchen paper and glue. Right this is a gory effect that I think you'll all like. This is just bits of um, aluminium foil scrumpled up and what I do is I twist it slightly as well and then form these kind of um, interesting kind of snaky shapes. And again, these are going to look like sort of entrails or tentacles or uh, anything really. But when these are all painted up, they'll end up looking really cool. This is them added to the base of our creature. What I've also done, obviously I've glued them on with the super PVA glue again. I've also put quite a few kind of blobs of the PVA glue onto the top of the aluminium foil. And I've done like a sort of a thin coating over most of the aluminium foil as well. And what this does, of course, is because it dries like sort of rubbery, it really makes these kind of bits of um, tin foil really strong. Next, for the sort of internal mouth part, I made two rings of milliput and I kind of merged them into the shape that I had already. 
And while those two rings were still um, soft milliput, I added a load of teeth. So you can see I've put smaller teeth in the middle and then a medium sized teeth round the edge. And this forms this kind of little cool mouth. And then you can see what I've done is rolled some long sausages of milliput and put them around the edge to form this kind of um, bendy ring. You can see at the moment it's still soft. So what I've done is I've propped it like this on some milliput boxes and then as this sets I can just push it slightly more um, just to form these kind of cool curve shapes at the edges. You can see for the next stage what I did was add some milliput to those kind of curve shapes that I made a second ago and while that was still soft I've added longer teeth into that and also remember I only used those um, those plastic parts at the beginning just to give me a sort of a shape to work on. Um, I didn't want the claws from that to be the, like a feature so what I've done is made my own claws over the top just sort of refined the shape of it a bit more so there's some much larger kind of claws at the front here that makes the whole creature look a lot more kind of grotesque I think. Right for the painting what I've done this time is paint the whole thing in this kind of flesh colour um, what I've done in the past is paint everything really dark, like black or almost black, and then a um, dry brush on top of that, and gradually build it lighter and lighter. On this one, I'm kind of doing um, the opposite, really. I'm putting on the light colour on first. So this is, yeah, just pale flesh colour. So this is made with yellow ochre, white, and a tiny bit of red. That gives you your kind of base flesh. And I'm just using System 3 acrylic paints for all of the painting stages on this. Next I added some really watered down cadmium red. So the technique here is that you make it so watery that when you put it on it just goes into all the little cracks and gaps everywhere. Um, and this looks really nice. It means that all of the high points are left in the flesh colour. So you can see look on the bumps of the body you've got little kind of rings of the darker red colour around it. Um, and like I say, on all of the little gaps inside all the little kind of dents and things, you can see um, bits of red. This gives this really nice kind of um, fleshy appearance. Um, my wife said, that looks hideous, so that's always a good sign. That means that it's working if she says something like that. Right, this is still the same stage, but I want you to look at something carefully for a second. Um, when I hold these entrail bits up, have a look, because this is just with the paint added, and you can see that the paint gives it quite a sort of a matte kind of finish to it. So look at all the kind of flesh bits in here, and look at sort of how matte looking they are. And this is important, because in a second I'm going to show you the next stage, and I want you to see how different it looks. So, see if you can see the difference when I hold this up to the camera. So, I've glazed this with something called System 3 Acrylic Glaze Medium Gloss. And what it does, it gives it this really nice shiny effect. So, in the past, I have just used a thin layer of Super PVA glue. That does the same thing. It gives it a really nice kind of shine. Um, but I think because the System 3 Glaze Medium just dries a little less opaque, it gives a slightly shinier kind of finish. Um, so I'm really pleased with this. It gives a slight kind of wet look. Makes it look a lot more creepy. Okay, this is this tiny tub of PVA glue I was telling you about. It's not, it's absolutely massive and it weighs a ton. Um, I think I paid about 60 quid for this, but it has lasted me for like years, literally. So here you go, you got, this is the System 3 Acrylic Glaze Medium, if you want to see what that looks like. Um, it's worth getting some of this for yeah those little shiny effects. Next I painted all the teeth and claws. So I just painted them all white initially and then I've just gone in with some yellow ochre paint um, really thick at the base of each tooth or each claw and then I've just watered down the yellow ochre as well just to soften from the dark yellow ochre into the white. And you can do this in quite a textured way, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it is a little bit um, textured, it actually adds, I think, to the effect. Makes it look a bit more realistic. Um, I think this really makes all the teeth stand out a lot more. And, uh, yeah, visually, it gives much more of a kind of uh, scary look to the whole creature. 
All the flesh was looking pretty good, but I just wanted it to have a little bit more impact at the bottom. So what I've done here is just mix a very dark red colour. So if you mix, um, yeah, just your normal kind of cadmium red with some dark brown, you can get this kind of really nice effect that looks a lot more like actual sort of realistic blood. And again, what I've done is really watered it down and just touched it into all those kind of shadowy places at the bottom and it kind of runs in and this really kind of makes things kind of stand out a bit. You can see I've also done it on the rim at the um, base of the wooden stand and I think um, that looks good as well. It just makes it really dark at the bottom. Right, I just wanted to show you these few basic parts. Um, you'll see what I'm going to do with these in a minute, but just got a couple of these kind of circle clips, a plastic um, ring here that I've made a split in so that it's sort of flexible, um, and then there's a little chain and a wooden branch. Okay, and this is how it's turned out. So you can see I've used the branch at the back there. Um, I actually painted it a very dark brown and then dry brushed some light brown over the top to bring back out the wood texture. This no trespassing sign is made out of a large sort of lollipop stick that I've just broken up and then stained and things. And um, there's some bits of moss. You can see here the, the um, ring with the chain goes down and then he's got the um, sort of collar around his neck and then there's another um, ring at the bottom there. So that's quite cool. It makes him look like a sort of creepy pet of somebody. <laughs> sort of like a an outback person's pet chained to a branch. I quite like that effect. Um, the moss, incidentally, I've put it on. This is all fresh moss at the moment, so it's all nice and green, and it looks good for the video. But obviously what tends to happen with moss is it dries, and the colour fades, and it's no longer green. So what you can do is actually, when it does dry you can get yourself some really watered down green acrylic paint and if it is watery you can just touch it onto the dry moss and it'll soak in and that brings back the green colour to your dead moss and uh, that's a good little tip for anybody who's a sort of model maker moss does have this habit of dying very quickly and just fading to a horrible brown colour but yeah just touching in some green paint will make it look alive again it's been really nice making up my own little creature again. Normally I make things from movies, things like gremlins, critters, ghoulies, a uh, creature from Terror Vision, that kind of thing. Um, I've done the uh, creature from Tremors as well. So check those out if you get a chance. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, thanks again to Milliput for sponsoring this channel. Please check out my other sculpting videos and um, hit subscribe if you like them and you want to see more in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.